All right, 29, we have a statistical test that involves the following null and alternative hypotheses. We have that ho is that mu is 64, and that ha, the alternative hypothesis, is that mu is greater than 64. So which of the following describes a type 2 error? So let's remember what a type 2 error is. That's when we fail to fail to reject the null hypothesis, we fail to reject HO when the alternative, so when HA is true. Failing to reject the null hypothesis when the alternative is true. So the null hypothesis is that the mean is 64 and the alternative is that it's more than 64. So that means that we're basically, we're basically, we basically believe that the mean is 64 when it's actually greater. So let's see which of those would make sense. So valence rejecting hypothesis when a population mean is 64. No, what would it be A? It would be when it's greater than 64. So it looks like it's going to be valence reject HO and all hypothesis when a population mean is greater than 64. And so yeah, that would be B. Population mean being greater than 64 is HA. The answer is simply B. All right, 30, the marketing director for an ice cream company investigated whether there was a difference in preference for two new ice cream flavors, coffee candy and mango. Each participant from a large group of people was randomly assigned to taste one of the two flavors. After tasting, each person raised the flavor on the numerical scale from one to five. Where one represented strongly dislike and five represented strongly like. It's two sample t interval for the, a difference between two means, how can candy minus mango is constructed. Based on that interval, there was a convincing to, to, there was convincing statistical evidence of a difference in population mean flavor ratings. Mango having the greater sample mean rating. Which of the following could be the constructed interval? Okay, this is a long, a lot of you know wording. And the key is to construct it into like um, the proper the proper difference of means. So we have okay, we got um, a, a, a two sample t interval for difference of means. So cotton candy, so we're gonna call that mu mu sub c minus the mean of mango, so mu sub n. Let's construct it. But based on the interval, there is convincing statistical evidence of a difference in population mean flavor range with mango having the greater sample meaning. Okay, so what, we're, so what this is saying is that, or the sample mean ratings, like that. So we're saying, so this is saying that the mean of mango, so mu sub m, is greater than the mean of, the mean of the, um, the cotton candy. So mu sub m is greater than mu sub c. So if, if this is going to be um, what we're trying to figure out, let's look at this, let's read this a little more carefully. If we're, if, when we're, if we're looking at um, an inference test, what the, the null hypothesis or there being no difference is saying that these two are equal to each other. So their difference would be equal to zero. But if we're trying to find um, the comet interval where we have that the mean of mango was greater than the mean of con candy, then let's just adjust this by bringing the mean of mango onto, onto the other side. So this is, this is the same as this. But now, I actually didn't need to write that much. But if we're looking at that, we're saying that the mean of mango has greater has a greater sample mean rating. Then this is basically saying that if we base if we took mango away from from um, if we took if we took the mango if we subtracted the mean of mango from each side, you would have 
zero is greater than mu sub c minus mu sub n. So what does that mean? This is this is a negative number because um so just to make this is I probably should have wrote it like this. So another way of looking at this is mu sub c minus mu sub n is less than zero. But we want to see where which of these would have a, a negative value will be centered at a negative value. Because in order for this to be true, we're saying that it has to be less than zero or it has to be a negative number. So um, it's, since it's since the, um, they can only be stiff, they can only be scaled from one to five, um, you, we, we would roll out a, that's just, that's too extreme. Their difference is gonna go that far. B makes sense because they're, it's, it's centered on a negative value. And C wouldn't make sense because in here we have some positive values. We only, we have to have only negative numbers. Only negative numbers will work for this. So this could be the only one that would give us reasonable evidence. Or sorry, C, B would be the only one that would give us reasonable evidence because all the values in here are negative. All the values are here are negative. So the key in this problem is figuring out if we're going to look at a negative or positive. I think I made that sound more complicated than, than, it, than it should have. So I apologize about that. But just the answer is B. Because it's, set, because it's all negative, central on negative. All right, let's move on to this. The director of the marketing department wants to estimate the proportion of people who purchase a certain product online. The director originally planned to obtain a random sample of 2,500 people who purchased the product. However, because of budget concerns, the sample size will, will be reduced to 1,500 people, which the following describes the effect of reducing the number of people in the sample. Okay, so let's look, let's look at um, a, an, an expression for, that involves the sample size and proportion. And it looks like all of these are we're talking about the variance. So remember the variance is just the standard deviation squared. This is the standard deviation. So this is the variance. The variance is the standard deviation squared. We'll talk about sample proportion. So if we look at um, our formula sheets, in case you don't don't have it memorized, you do not have to have it. Look at the equation for um, standard deviation, which we have as this. So this is standard deviation. When you square this, or square this, because we want to be more technical, it doesn't really matter. Um, the square root would go away. So this would just be equal to p hat times one minus p hat over n, right? And so you wanna see what would happen when we change the n from 2,500 to 1,500. What happens to this value? So, so in one case we would have, let's say we would have this being equal to p hat times one minus p hat, over 2,500 versus p hat times one minus p hat over 1,500. So what happens to this value? Like what happens when you divide from 2,500 to 1,500? Is this value gonna be bigger or is it gonna be smaller? That's what you wanna essentially recognize. And since you're dividing by a lesser amount, you're going to have a bigger number. That's just simple math. I mean, and you can just test this with anything. 1 over 2,500 versus 1 over 1,500, this will be a bigger value. So since this is, so since this, this is greater than that, that means the variance increases. The variance of, of not the population, this population, this is a sample, number, not B, And not sampled exactly because we're technically 
we're looking at a sampling distribution. Remember, each, each sample size has its own distribution. The variance of the sampling distribution will increase. This is a very, this is, this is gonna be, this is gonna deal with the stuff you cover in like a probability unit, unit, probably chapter seven. But um, if you look in here, see how we're talking about parameters with sampling distribution. So maybe that can help you. Answer would be C. Okay. 